Good morning and happy Easter. Uh, it's nice to be with you this morning and we welcome you all here, those of you that are worshiping with us in the building and those online. It's my great pleasure to welcome the Reverend Dr. Bill Smith and his family uh, to our worship service this morning. <laughs> I'm going to let you sit down, because you know me, if I get started, I may go on. Um, Reverend Ed reached out to Reverend Bill. That Ed, he, even when he's sick and when he's, you know, under the weather, he does make sure that his, his faithful followers are well looked after. And Bill comes highly recommended by both Ed and Kathy, so we're in for a great morning. Anyway, welcome. Just a few announcements from this morning. First of all, thank you to everyone who contributed to the flower fund. The flowers are absolutely gorgeous. And thank you, Cynthia, for arranging them so beautifully. It's never too late to give to the flower fund and, and for flower donations. You should have an insert in your, um, in your bulletin just recognizing who the flowers are placed um, in memory of or with thoughts of. and. Uh, as I say, thank you very, very much. Just a few things. On the sign, it says that Soup's On on Tuesday is at the Anglican Church, and we partner with the Anglican Church with Soup's On, um, and it has been at the Anglican Church. However, starting this week, it moves across the road here to our church. So if you're looking for soup Tuesday at noon between 11.30 and 1. It's here in, uh, in the basement, and everyone is welcome. We have a great time. Uh, I, there's a lot of chit-chat that goes on, um, and that's just as important as the soup. So do come out. Uh, Tuesday, April the 2nd at 1.30, the United Church Women uh, and all the ladies are welcome. So you can come and have soup and then stay, and they'll feed you at UCW too, and you won't need any dinner. It'll be great. And then looking ahead later in the month, the World Day of Prayer service, April the 19th at 2 o'clock here at Wellington United Church. And of course, by April the 19th, we'll be welcoming uh, our new minister, Reverend Carter, to our midst as well. So it'll be uh, just an exciting time this month. Anyway, I'm going to be quiet now. So welcome. <laughs> I remember it as if it were yesterday. I was the first to arrive at the tomb. Me, along with Jesus' mother, Mary, and some other friends. The sun had set early on the Sabbath, and as was the custom, we did not have time to properly anoint Jesus' body. We were unsure how we would roll the stone away away from the entrance of the tomb, or even if the guards would let us. But Jesus has always been there for us, and now we wanted to be there for him. As the sun was rising in the east, we approached the gravesite and were both surprised and fearful. The stone was gone. So too were the guards. I ran to take a closer look. I, I needed to see. Did the grave robbers steal his body? Did the Romans remove his lifeless corpse? With tears rolling down my cheek, I asked myself, what has happened to our Lord? The others stayed behind, still terrified and grief-stricken. I moved a little closer and peered inside. Fear gripped my body, but I knew I needed to be there. Inside was the slab, the flat stone on which I had seen them lay Jesus' body just a few days earlier. 
As I rubbed my weary eyes, it appeared as if there were angels watching over it. Was I hallucinating? Was my mind playing tricks on me? Where was my Jesus? He is not here, the angels told me. He is risen, risen. This was too much to take in. Overwhelmed, I stepped back. How, how can this be, I asked myself, trying to make sense of it all. Risen, risen. A gardener drew near. Why are you crying, he asked. Why am I crying? Don't you know what happened? They have taken away my Lord and I don't know where he is. The gardener drew even closer and in a quiet and comforting way, he said my name, Mary, Mary. I recognized that voice. I had heard it so many times before. I looked up. Rabbi, teacher, is it really you? Yes, Mary, he said. Now, go tell the others that I am alive. Alive, alive. Then and there I would tell the world, the Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. My name is Peter. Well, actually it is Simon, but Jesus liked to call me Peter because it means rock. And my faith was rock solid, or so I thought. I was one of the first to follow, recruited right off my fishing boat. I saw it all, the miracles, water into wine, feeding 5,000. There was nothing this Jesus couldn't do. He spoke of love and forgiveness. He took time to open the minds of the inquisitive and played with the children. I never wanted to be far from his side. And when he asked what I thought of him, I said, you are the real thing, the Messiah, the son of the living God. I was willing to live for him. I was willing to die for him, or at least that's what I thought. That was until last Friday. They arrested him in the garden and dragged him through the streets of Jerusalem. I was scared, terrified. And when someone asked me if I was one of his followers, I panicked. Might they do the same to me? No, I yelled, I don't know him. They stripped him and whipped him. They mocked him and thrust a large wooden cross on his back. His face grimaced with pain. I wanted to help, but terror filled my very fiber. Are you one of his followers, someone asked. Again, I yelled out, no, no, now get away from me. I wanted to run and hide, but I couldn't. I needed to be there. I needed to see with my own eyes. But when I was asked a third time, I swore. I have never seen that man before in my life. The rooster crowed in the distance. And I remember Jesus saying that my de denial would happen. I wept. My Saturday was pretty quiet. We disciples tried to get together, but it was hard. We were like a ship without a rudder. We did not know what to do. But on Sunday morning, Mary ran to John and me with an extraordinary tale. The tomb was empty. 
Jesus was alive. I needed to see for myself. I needed to say I'm sorry, so I ran as fast as these legs would carry me. But John, a decade younger, got there first. He stood at the entrance of the tomb, afraid of what he might see or not see. But no longer would I let fear rule me, and I ran right in. There it was before my eyes. The tomb was empty, but the bedclothes were neatly folded, and there was a holy aura that filled the place. Now later on, I would see Jesus face to face, but right there and then, all his words came flooding back to me. I am the resurrection and the life. On the third day, I will rise again. Yes, fear was gone, and I could boldly say, the Lord is risen, he is risen indeed.
Please be seated. Well, good morning, everyone. Happy Easter to you. As you heard, my name is Reverend Bill Smith. I'm delighted to be here today and share in this worship at Wellington United Church. A uh, welcome to those who are visiting with, with YouTube this morning. Uh, I spoke to Ed yesterday. Ed says, uh, thank you for your prayers, your concerns, your love, and listen to Bill this morning. So that's Ed's message, and uh, he is in good shape. He expects to be home from hospital tomorrow. And, uh, and is doing extremely well. So thank you for supporting him as we support one another in faith and in health and wholeness. Shall we come before God in prayer? Let us pray. Holy God, on this Easter Sunday, we gather here in this special place, this church, this place where you call home, where two or three are gathered in your name, you are in our midst. And especially on this Easter, as we speak of resurrection, we know your spirit is in us and all around us. We thank you for that day, that day when you conquered death, that day when you rose, that all might see and all might know that the Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now, with apologies to our YouTube folk, I'm going to wander here a bit. So... Uh, here we go. I was told there may or may not be children, so you can all be my children this morning, if you will. So, any, anybody have any good Easter customs in your home? Anybody have any customs that you do every Easter? Eat chocolate. Eat chocolate. I heard that before. <laughs> Anything else that you do? Eggs for the grandkids. How about for the adults? <laughs>
And so sometimes we don't think of this as very much, but this is a real message for us. The tomb is empty. The Lord is risen. Now, I thought, I thought, what if what happened if I gave you guys eggs or nothing in this? You might be a little upset, right? So I thought I'd better stop yours or something else. So you can open yours now. You have an A. Salvador. number four, 100 and 162. It'll be on the screen. The glory of our King. Enjoy your shot. <laughs> the glory of our King was seen as he To all the children wave and say, Hosanna, King Most High. The glory of our King was seen with his arms stretched wide to show. glory of our King was seen on the first Easter day, when Christ rose up, set free from death, to love and fight to stay. Please be seated. <laughs> Our minister knows this, this morning that I'm, I put the cross on, but I didn't eat the chocolate. <laughs> Yet. Our psalm reading today is uh, on the screen, I believe, or will be. And if you people would read the uh, bold print, that would be wonderful. And uh, I'll read the small print. It's Psalm 118, part one and two. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let Israel now say, Let the house of Aaron say, God's love endures forever. 
Let those who fear God say, God's love endures forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is my strength and my song. God has become my salvation. The right hand of God does mighty things. The right hand of God raises up. The right hand of God does mighty things. I shall not die, but live, and I shall proclaim what God has done. God indeed punished me, but did not give me over to death. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And our scripture reading today is found in the New Testament. It's found in Acts, and I am reading from uh, verses 34 to 43. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no receptor of persons, but in every nation he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. The word which God sent on to the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That word, I say, ye you know which was published throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. Him God raised up the third day and showed him openly, not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before of God, even to us, who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of quick and dead. And to him give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. Let God add his blessing to his holy word. Amen. He is risen, he is risen, hallelujah, Christ. 
Thank you, choir. Turning now to the gospel. From John's gospel, the 20th chapter, beginning at verse 1. <clears throat> Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said, they have taken our Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where we, they have laid him. So Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the stripes of linen lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the stripes of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in a separate place, away from the rest of the linen. Finally, the other disciple who reached the tomb first went in for himself. He saw and he believed. He still did not understand scripture that Jesus would rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over and looked into the tomb and saw two angels in white where Jesus' body had been being laid, one at the head and one at the foot. They asked of her, woman, why are you crying? <clears throat> they have taken my Lord, she said, and I don't know where they put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize it was Jesus. He asked her, woman, why are you crying? What are you looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, sir, if you have carried him away, Tell me where you will put him so I might go and get him. Jesus said, Mary. She turned towards him and cried out in Arabic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, do not hold me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them I am descending to the Father, my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them all the things that she had seen. Thanks be to God for this holy truth. Amen.
Let us pray together. May the words of my mouth, the thoughts of our minds, the meditations of our hearts be accepted in your sight, for you are our God and you are our salvation. Amen. <clears throat> if the Christian story was a piece of music, this day would be the crescendo. If it was a novel, today would be the climax. All that went before the signs, the wonders, the miracles, the messianic claims, they all lead to this point in the story. And like any, every good thriller, it has all of the key ingredients. There's suspense, deception, love, hate, drama, betrayal, even death. It's a traumatic story that occurred in those seven days that we call Holy Week. And yet, in the end, it's a victorious story. The story which we call Easter. Again, like any good piece of music, its rhythm seems <clears throat> to pick up <clears throat> as we go along, moving faster and fam faster, and we hear the cymbals clash, and we hear Jesus say, it is finished his final words on the cross. But is it? Is it really finished? This Jesus, the one who bent down and took children on his knee, the one who turned Mary's life around, the one who gave sight to the blind and life to Lazarus, this hope for the world, was it all over? Was it all finished? They put him to death. They mocked him and beat him and nailed him to a cross. It certainly seemed like it was finished, even for those who were there. Did you know that this week was so traumatic and dramatic in the life of the Gospel of St. Matthew that a full quarter of his book of the 28 chapters are dedicated to one week. From the Jerusalem palms to the agony of Gethsemane, from the upper room where Jesus talked about his body being broken to a kiss of betrayal and 30 pieces of silver. It's all there in those seven days. Until we come to today. And today, everything turns around and we move from agony to ecstasy. Easter Sunday. It's the story when God's truth was fully revealed. It's the story upon which the axis of our faith rotates. You see, if Jesus had not risen from the grave, it was game over. It was finished. It was the end. Christianity would have been reduced to one of those good tales told over and over again, but somehow lost in time, of a good man who did good works, but they all would have been buried with him in the tomb. What makes the Easter story so compelling? And even more than that, what makes the Easter story so relevant is that it rose. The, ro the whole story rose from the dead. The whole ministry rose from the dead. Mary saw it on that first Easter morning, as did Peter and John and many others, as we heard in the Acts of the Apostles. And here, over 2,000 years after the fact, we're still talking about it. It still inspires people's lives. It still directs people's activities. It still enables us and grounds us to live. And countless of millions of people the world over still dare to believe in a story, in a truth, 2,000 years ago. Today we celebrate that the world changed that day, 
And perhaps more than that, we changed that day without even knowing it. We changed that we can boldly proclaim that on Easter, Jesus proved that love is stronger than hate. He proved that caring is more powerful than selfishness. That good can triumph over evil. That there's always room for forgiveness, even when you're on a cross. And that life, life does not end on a cross, but rises. For whosoever lives and believes in me will never die. Perhaps what makes this Easter event so special is that it is totally beyond our, our human experience. It requires us to step out of the box. It requires us to speak out of the limitations of our human mind and our human understanding. It asks us to come to this cross and come to this empty tomb with open minds and open hearts and see and hear and experience that story which has been told over and over and over again. Author, lawyer, and first prosecutor, Leah Strobel, wrote a book a few years back trying to debunk resurrection. He used his analytical skills as a prosecutor to, to try and tear the story apart. But in the end, in the end, the book says that I could find no compelling truth to deny that story of 2,000 years ago. And today, Strobel is an active Christian. Like Mary and Peter and Thomas, like, like John and the other disciples, even amid their doubts, they discovered that the Lord is risen. History and personal experience shows us the effects of this day. You know, Christianity is the largest religion in the world. And as some of us were in El Salvador a few weeks ago, there it was celebrated. As anywhere we go in the world, we will find churches celebrating. For this is not a local event. This is not simply a personal event. This is a global event where Jesus rose for us all. <clears throat> We come with the story, the fact. We come with the experience, the history. And the third part of that triad is we need to come with faith. We need to be willing to look beyond what we can understand. You know, much of life is beyond what we can understand when we think about it. There are so many things that we just have to accept because there's no logic necessarily behind it. And yet we know the air that we breathe is there. And yet we know that the reality of life is all around us. And if we lean into it. Those who first went to the tomb were probably like us when we first heard the Easter story. There's no way this can happen. It's just beyond reasonable doubt, is it? The women went, not expecting to find Jesus, but they went there with their spices with their myrrh and their frankincense. Some speculate that this was the same, the same spices that the Magi gave to Jesus' parents when he was born some 33 years earlier. They were embalming spices. They came wondering how they would even anoint Jesus' body, which was their custom, because the stone was there and sealed. It was hard to believe, hard to believe anything other and it was over. The sun had set on the Friday, the beginning of the Sabbath. They were, they were unable to complete their, their holy ritual work. And so Sunday morning, as the sun was rising in the east, they made their way to the tomb. And there they saw it with their own eyes and recorded it that we too might hear the story. But Mary was not happy. Remember the words? She was horrified. They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where we, they put him. 
Again, no talk of resurrection here. Perhaps grave robbers, but Jesus has no value in earthly things. Perhaps Herod, but Herod had no control over the Roman soldiers. And so Mary did the only thing she could do. She ran off, confused to tell somebody else. I don't understand this, Peter, John, but he's not there. They've taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they've laid him. And so these two disciples, Peter and John, the one whom Jesus loved, ran to the tomb as fast as they could go. And, and Peter, as we heard, was about a decade younger than John, or John was a decade younger than Peter, and he got there faster. And he got right to the door, and he couldn't go in. You know, sometimes it's hard to stand at the face of death. And John was afraid. But Peter, huffing and puffing like an old man, made his way finally to the tomb. But he didn't stop. Peter had lived long enough to stand in the face of death. Peter had denied enough that he needed to stand up for what he believed. And Peter ran right in. And he saw the cloths. The linen cloths that had been laid on Jesus' body and the towel that was over his face, wrapped up in a corner somewhere else. No signs of foul play. No indication of a forced entry. And Peter and John looked around and thought, might it be true? Might he have risen? Peter then went back to the upper room, there to join the other disciples, and they tried to make sense of all of these things. And if we were to read ahead in scripture, we know that they stayed there for the whole week until Jesus appeared for them a second time there in the front of Thomas. But Mary, Mary didn't go with them. She just could not leave that spot, and so she sat down on a rock there beside the empty tomb. Now it's good to keep your top on the water. There we go. Mary went to the empty tomb, and she sat down, and in her doubt and in her grief, she did what probably any of us would do. She cried. They have taken away my Lord, and I don't know where they put him. And she wept. And she felt his presence around her. And the question, Mary, why are you weeping? And still distraught, she said, they've taken his body away. And Mary said, I don't know where they put him. And a quiet voice uttered her name, Mary. And she turned around, and she knew that name, she knew that voice, and she said, Rabboni, which means teacher. Now, I don't know a whole lot about music, but I know after the crescendo comes the decrescendo. Thank you. And that means that gradual gentleness and calmness and silence that comes towards the end of the piece. And that's the Easter story. It built up higher and higher and higher until Mary heard her name. And then we find the peace of Easter, the peace that calls us by name. Mary, her boni. Jesus rewrote the human narrative that day. For we all have moments, like Jesus in Gethsemane, when we feel our friends can't be there for us. We all have moments when people like Judas might betray us, or like Mary when life seems out of control. That's all part of the human experience. But now Easter tells us that in those quiet moments, perhaps especially in those quiet moments, Jesus is calling us by name. Mary, don't worry, you're not alone. Don't worry, we'll get through this together. Don't worry, I have risen. 
risen from the dead, and whosoever lives and believes in me will never die. Don't you know that I said I would never leave you or forsake you? I've called you by name, you are mine. There are still those who say hallucinations. There are still those who say fabrications, and there always will be. And so we need to recognize that that's part of reality. And yet listen to the witnesses, as we heard from the Acts of the Apostles. On the third day, he appeared to us, not only us, but all who were chosen. And we ate and drank with him, for he rose from the dead. Easter, there's something about Easter. We all know the story. You didn't come here this morning expecting to hear anything new because you've heard it over and over and over again. And yet only when it becomes real, only when we place ourselves there beside Mary sitting on the rock or there with Peter and John in that empty tomb do we realize that the miracle of Easter is that God has the last word. Not Herod or Pilate, not hatred or bigotry, not repressive regimes or greed. God has the last word. And that word is resurrection. For whatever happens in life, we're not alone. I am with you, the true miracle of Easter. So woman, why are you weeping? You see, the story doesn't end with the cross. It doesn't even end with the empty tomb. The story lives on in you and me and all who choose to believe. The story lives on when we take the time amid all the hallelujahs and the praise the Lord to listen to that voice that calls us by name to say that I'm with you on your journey in life and in death and in life beyond death. So my friends, examine the evidence. Go back to scripture. Read the story again and again. Think of your experience. 2,000 years of experience of people who chose to live and to die for this one who rose on Easter. But all of that external stuff moves into the internal stuff. Think about what this means to you. The Lord is risen. Listen to the music. The joyous hallelujahs, the triumphant resurrection chords. Enjoy the celebrations. Surround yourself with family and friends. Hunt for Easter eggs. Do it again and again, but take the time to listen to that voice, the deep crescendo that says, amid all that's going on, you are not alone. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Thanks be to God. I invite you to to pray, and as we prepare ourselves, we will sing the, O God, hear our prayer. resurrected God. We gather today to celebrate without a doubt. We gather today to raise the hallelujahs, to open the Easter eggs and to find them empty. For Christ is risen. The tomb could not hold him. Death has no victory. We give you thanks this day that we can gather, that we live in a country where worship is free, that we are allowed to say and feel and share as our heart moves. So be with us as an Easter people, that we might journey back into that old story 
and make it our story, that we might feel God's presence in the presence of one another. And like Mary and Peter and John, we might be able to say he is risen. Healing God, we thank you for being with those who are ill this day, those who are struggling with, with illness, those who are grieving with loss. We think of Mary again, who wept, and sometimes that's our only response, is just to sit, sit and quietly cry, for it's hard to walk that road. And like Mary, we discover that we do not walk it alone, for the Savior, the teacher, is with us. We hold many people in our hearts and in our minds this day, and among them we pray for our friend, the Reverend Ed Bentley. We thank you for the miracle of modern medicine that allows open heart surgery to happen and within three days to be up walking again. Ed calls this his Easter experience. We thank you for all the doctors and nurses and technicians who bring life out of illness and joy in those times when we thought were hopeless. We give you thanks for the scriptures which tell us that story that lives on over and over again. And as we live this week as an Easter people, we pray that we might have time to celebrate. But may we also have time, perhaps at the opening or the close of day, to simply be still and allow God to speak to us. For we ask this in and through the name of Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now, as the guest minister, I'm not sure, do you take up an offering here or is it just left at the back? Do you pass plates? Oh, okay, plates will be passed. Gracious God, accept these gifts given with love. Use them for the furtherance of your will in this community and beyond. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. And now as we go, we sing 173, Thine is the Glory.
now into the world of God's making. Go and rejoice. We celebrate for the Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Go now with hallelujahs. Go now with songs of great joy. But then take the time to hold that quiet moment in your heart when you hear the rising of your voice. I am with you always to the end of the age. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit guide us on our journey this day and forevermore.